Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about the interview with Yuya Kimura, which is the series producer on his thoughts on NGS version 2. But on top of that, we will also be talking about the headline plus. But before we jump into all of that, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily. So if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So the very first thing I want to get out of the way is I will leave this link in the description below in case you want to read the full interview. I'm going to be skipping through a lot of the stuff he talks about here because a lot of it is pretty trivial or just, you know, kind of fluff. So I'm just going to cut to the chase and get straight to the juicy content. So for the very first question, we're going to start off with a little bit of fire. Do you play PSO2 New Genesis in your free time? If so, can you tell us a little bit about your gameplay experiences liked? What do you like to play or do for fun out? Outside of PSO2 NGS. And Kimura's answer was, I would rather keep the focus on the team and the game instead of my own personal playstyle. And that's all he had to say. So we can safely assume that, uh, no, he doesn't play his own game. He doesn't play uh, NGS. And um, that kind of answers a lot of questions on like, why we see certain things happen or implement it into the game and we're scratching our heads and like bashing our faces against the wall, going like, why is this happening? And um, yeah, if you're a developer and you don't play your own game, that, that that's kind of a red flag in my personal opinion. But in this interview, it's not all just HR fluff. I want to scroll all the way to the bottom because all of this stuff over here is just talking about like, oh, the history of PSO2 and like all the character designs and system designs and stuff like that. It's kind of boring in my personal opinion. I'm just going to jump down all the way to the stuff that is more useful for us as the player. So right here in the highlighted text is a very, very good question. They're basically asking, hey, developers, are you even listening to the community? How do you decide what community feedback to take into consideration and, uh, you know, and start improving the game? And Kimura says, player feedback and opinions are collected through official support channels and comments on various social media platforms. Dedicated staff such as Hero Arai compile and summarize this feedback. The development team also checks posts and social media daily. I, I don't believe this. This is big doubt. I know developers usually do not check socials because um, usually when they do, they get very depressed and it's just not good for mental health. So I highly doubt this is true, but nevertheless, they said it in the interview. So, you know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt to gather relevant reactions and opinions for consideration. Then they have weekly meetings where the team of directors and I discuss the responses and methods on regarding the matter. So, you know, this is cool and all. Basically, the TLDR is we complain a lot. If we make enough noise, the developers eventually do hear about it. However, that is not the important thing. The important thing is here. This is what I want to bring to everyone's attention because I've known this for a while, but I wasn't allowed to speak about it. But now since Kimura said it in the interview, I guess by ergo proxy, I'm kind of allowed to talk about it. So the first thing is it takes forever for development, all right? Sega is a slow company. They develop things slow. They release things slow. Everything about it is slow, all right? So please don't compare it with like Western standards or Chinese standards. In Chinese standards, you know, our gotcha games, we pump out content like it's nothing. New events, new content, new whatever. We don't really care about quality. It's more about giving you so much quantity that you drown in the content. And that's how the Chinese mentality is for game development. However, Sega does things a little bit different or very different actually. And you can see over here, simple changes can be reflected within two or three months. So simple changes takes two to three months. This is considered like, oh, let's add a little button here. Let's reorganize the UI a little bit. That is considered simple changes and it takes them two to three months while challenging ones may take six months or more. So challenging things would be considered as class balancing. Furthermore, since these developments were not originally planned, we have to decide whether to prioritize them based on how urgent the changes are, which may lead delaying or reducing our original development plans. Generally, we develop content that will be released six months to over a year in advance. If it's something that's difficult to do, but not very urgent, even if we accepted the request or options it may take a year and a half or two years or more for them to be implemented, all right? So I just want you guys to take a moment to let this sink in. For simple changes like reorganizing a UI takes them two to three months. For more intermediate changes such as class balancing 
it takes them six months. However, if it's something that's not urgent, they might push that back. Let's say that class balancing was supposed to come out in six months, but they think, oh, the game's fine. You know, classes are fine. They don't need to change anything. They can delay that to a year, a year and a half, two years. And for more complicated things, such as new content, it definitely takes them at the bare minimum six months to implement these changes. So now that you know this information, hopefully you understand why things are the way they are in NGS right now. So for example, seasonal events. When seasonal events were first introduced, we were capped. You could only farm a certain amount of seasonal points every single week. So you basically had to log in every week, farm up those points. And if you wanted to farm more, the game was like, no, you can't. That's it, GG, wait till next week. They time gated you. And then on top of that, the seasonal weapons, they only gave specific weapons, seasonal weapons. It wasn't the full roster of all the different weapons. It was like, oh, this season, there's no katana. Too bad, Bravers you're screwed you can't use a katana there is no seasonal katana for you this season and it was really bizarre and mind-blowing and stupid even these simple changes adding in a seasonal weapon uncapping your freaking seasonal points took them freaking six months to do it we had so many seasons where I was bashing my head against the wall telling the community managers telling the developers bro this is stupid just add in a freaking weapon. Just uncap it. Let me farm as much seasonal points as I want. It took them six months. And I was basically pestering these people every single week. And it still took them six months, guys. So please understand that Sega's development team is slow. Very, very slow. And because I knew this information, it was very difficult for me to be mad at Sega all the time. Because you can only be angry at something for so long. I've been making content for this game for three years, maybe four years or something, and I can't stay angry all the time. Eventually you burn out, you boil down, and you're just kind of like, ah, disappointment, whatever. But there is a lot of potential for this game. You know it, I know it, everyone else knows it. It just takes time because the development team is freaking slow as heck. Sure, could they hire more people? Yes, I would love them to hire more people. Why are they this slow? I have no idea. It's just the way things are. This is reality. This is the way that Sega operates, and I have to accept that. As a consumer and a player of this game, there's nothing I can do about it. What am I gonna do? Go over there and kick down the door and be like, hey guys, I'll work for free. I'll, I'll fix your game now, no problemo. No, it's, it's not it's, it's not realistic for me to do that. So it, you know, I just accept the way things are. And that's why a lot of people misunderstand me for being overly positive and always saying like, oh, Sega's fine, the game's great, blah, blah, blah. That's because I understand what's happening behind the scenes and all the crap they have to go through. Hopefully you guys are a little bit more understanding on why things happen the way they are. Now, am I saying you should forgive Sega for what happened with the version 2 update? No, they screwed up big with that. That was a huge, huge issue. A lot of players, myself included, were waiting for this update. They posted this six months ago, everyone was like, Oh boy, it's going to be the next big thing. You know, it's it's got a bigger title than all the other headlines. It's got to be a huge, big change. And if they didn't have any of the delays, it would have been worthy of the version 2 update. Unfortunately, it's not, and they have to push it back to August. But if I was them, I would definitely have changed the title. I would be like, hey guys, I know we promised that version 2 was going to come out in June. However, we do have some delays. So what we can do is we can show you what we've been working on. We can show you the August content if you want. Just be like, you know, just to temper people's expectations and be like, okay, you know, the developers messed up again, you know, uh, time constraints and whatever. And they're delaying this content and we have to wait two more months for it. But at the very least, I can see what the hell the content is. You know, that is something that I would at least have done. And then on top of that, I would obviously change the name and be like, oh yeah, version two is actually delayed till August. This is just creative spaces. This is kind of like the stepping stone. And uh, don't worry guys, version two is coming out in August. But even then, I'm sure there would be so much backlash 
because as a community, we've literally just been held by the nose and it's just like, hey guys, don't worry, wait till next month. Hey guys, don't worry, wait till next month. Wait till the month after that. And we're kind of just constantly in this uh, cycle where we're always waiting for next month. Next month's gonna be better. Oh, copium, hopium, whatever. And you know, I get it. I get it. I'm tired. I'm frustrated. You guys are probably even more frustrated than me because content is being released so freaking slow in NGS. You can literally take a six month vacation, come back and you'll have so much fun for one month. You'll binge through everything, blast through everything within a month. And you'll be like, wow, that was really fun. And then go take another six month vacation. Honestly, I think that might be the best way to play this game if you are the type of player that loves to blast through content extremely quickly, consuming it in bulk is going to be the best way for you. Because if you're a daily grinder, you log in every single day, you play PSO2, PSO2 is considered one of your main games, you are going to be dying. You're, you're basically in a desert. You dried up all the content. There's no more content for you to do in NGS. And you're digging a hole trying to find more water, quote unquote, content, but you're in the Sahara Desert. Like where, where are you going to find water? You've done everything. You've consumed all the content. There is nothing left for you. Now, of course, there is always actual content to do. It's just not the content that you want to do. For example, how many people in NGS do you know that knows how to play every single class to a professional degree? That is number one on all the ladder boards or at least top 10 in all the ladder boards for all the classes and knows how to use every single weapon. I can't even name one person. I can name people that are good at specific classes, maybe one or two classes, but I do not know a single person that can play every single class at a competitive level and has gear for all of them at endgame right? It, just, just, it doesn't exist because people like to stick with the content that they enjoy doing. They don't want to try different things because they're like, listen, this is PSO2. This is a fantasy star game. I play this game because it's a power fantasy. I want to feel strong. I don't want to restart and remake another class and redo my gear because that's a hassle. Just look at the dual quest. Dual quest was basically make a new set of armor and a new weapon. And it exploded and backfired in the dev's face so, so hard. People are like, bruh, I'm not remaking my armor for this one piece of content. That's stupid. And so the devs had to go back to the drawing board. They're like, oh shit, this was not a good idea. And the global team literally sat there tearing their hair out going, we freaking told you so. Why the hell did you do this? And, um... Yeah, Sega's dev team was like, oh, ooh, maybe, maybe, maybe we should have listened to them. But, you know, whatever. I'm not here to just rant on the dev team all day because the dev team is how they are. You know, they're catered to the Japanese audience. They're Japanese. They do everything the Japanese style. They don't really care about the global side. The global side, we're, we're just, we're, we're secondary citizens here. We don't really matter that much to them unless uh, something really big happens and the Japanese players are also pissed off. Which just so happened that the version 2 update was not very well received on the Japanese side as well. But with that rant over, the next question is, what updates for endgame content not including fashion is coming into PSO2 New Genesis version 2? NSA right here, in August we plan to release endgame content that will have significant amount of random elements designed for party play and will encourage multiple attempts at the same time we are also planning to release ultra difficulty quest geared towards party play such as dual quests that are available now that features one very powerful boss fight. Alright guys, I'm gonna be super frank with you guys. Do not expect anything crazy. It's gonna be a game mode. All right, two different game modes. One is this ultra difficult quest where you can run it as a party. And uh, it's basically gonna be the same as dual quest, except you run it as a party and your gear actually works there. You don't need to re-augment. You don't need to get some random defi capsules, whatever. You just run it with your normal gear and you can just run it with your friends and you fight a powerful boss. However, it says right here, one very powerful boss fight. So I'm sure a lot of people are going to run it. They're going to have fun for about a week and they're going to get bored and they're not going to run it anymore. All right. So temper your expectations. OK, I'm going to be super pessimistic here so that everyone is going to be calm and be OK when this comes out in August and everyone's going to be like, oh, cool. It exceeded my expectation because I didn't expect anything. 
All right. However, the second piece of content is quests that have a significant amount of random elements designed for party play and will encourage multiple attempts. So if I want it to be super, super negative, I can just chalk this up to be like, oh yeah, it's going to be Geometric Labyrinth rank three. Oh yeah, it's going to be Cannonball Rumble version two. And this is where I want to bring up the headline plus. So in the headline plus, GWiz gave a very long live stream. It was like four hours. I'll leave the link in the description below. But they said some very, very interesting things. And as usual, since they're not allowed to officially disclose everything, they had to use it through a very cryptic way in order to give us the clues and hints that uh, we wanted. So at 34 minutes and 10 seconds in the live stream, GWiz said the dynamics and variants of a single type of quest acted as the backbone for PSO, PSU, and to a lesser extent, PSO2 itself. With that said, this new quest type is as dynamic as it was. Creative space story and content in August and everything else is more content than when PSO became PSO version 2 back in the day. A bit after this, at 36 minutes, they talk about leveraging the bad PR from the recent headline for information for the new quest from the dev team. So what they talked about in the 36 minute mark was the dual quest mode was such a flop on the global side of things that uh, there was a lot of backfire. And because of this, GWiz, as well as the other community managers, were able to use this as leverage to be like, yo, dev team, this was absolutely shite, and uh, you need to tell us what is the new quest type that you've been cooking, that you've been working on. We need to know what is coming next so that we can temper the player base's expectation in order to, uh, you know, not get too overly excited or over speculate and have all of that expectation and excitement backfire again. Unfortunately, you know, with version 2 update, as we all saw from the headline, it's still backfired nevertheless. And at 39 minutes of the video, as a PSO2 vet, I do think that this can dramatically change the appeal of daily PSO2 NGS play combat slash quests. You might say Cannonball Rumble, you might say Geometric Lambeth, and say, come on, we've been here for two years, we've been through this song and dance. This one is different, guys. That is what GWiz has to say. Now, before we continue on to dissect what is said over here, I want to bring to everyone's attention that version 2 was in development all the way back in September of last year. That was when they already drew up the concept design and everything for the new quest type. So it's taking them this long from September of last year all the way till June of this year, and they had to delay it to August, all right? I just want to give you guys context of how long it takes the development team to make freaking content. So I know there is no content. We're always lacking content. There's not enough content. There's not enough combat. There's not enough stuff to farm for, not enough things to upgrade. The fix system is garbage. There's a lot of problems, but I just want to bring to your attention that they were working on version 2 in September of last year till now and they had to delay it another two months okay so now are you seeing what I'm seeing on how slow the development team is so please understand that they are slow 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 I don't know how many times I need to say slow in this video but hopefully you guys get the message all right we can complain Maybe it's a great idea. You can give a perfect proposal. It'll take six months minimum for them to change anything. All right, with that being said, let's talk about what GWiz has to say here. So is this new game mode going to save NGS? No, it's not. There, super frank, super easy to the point. It's not going to save NGS. If you don't like NGS now, this game mode is not going to save it and be like, oh my God, this game's amazing now. It's not going to do that. If you like NGS now, great. There's going to be another option. There's going to be another game mode. There's going to be different things for you to do. It's going to be something more replayable. There's going to be something that has to do with our daily grind. Maybe it'll be a weekly. Maybe it'll be a daily. Probably going to be a weekly, but it's going to be something fun that you can do every single day and you probably would like to run with your friends because, uh, you know, maybe it's like an expedition or something along those lines. Who knows? Again, I don't want to bring people's expectations too high because whenever I do that, people always get mad at me and they're like, Caro, it's all your fault. You said we were going to space and we not going to space so why and uh you know so i'm just gonna be really down to earth and really chill with you guys here 
I think the new game mode is probably going to be something simple. It might be some instant base exploration zone, something that like what we had in the base game. I would like to see divide quest or something along those lines, but I don't think it's going to be like that. All right. You know, I'm just going to be super frank, super simple, because if it was like that, they would have made a big deal about it, but uh, it's probably not. And if it is, you know, at least I'll be pleasantly surprised and I'll be very happy. But with that being said, let us continue on with the interview over here. And uh, we get dropped a gigantic bombshell over here. A lot of people have been asking for the casino in NGS. They straight up just said no. They're just like, nope, we're not making a casino in NGS. Too much effort for too little payoff. It's not worth their time. And they basically just said, if you want to play the casino, go to the base game and play it there. Then that, that's pretty much this response right here. So um, yeah, you might not like the answer, but at least it's a very truthful answer and kills all hopium and copium as just, you know, very simple and straight to the point. So hopefully by going through the interview, as well as the headline plus, as well as a lot of input that I'm now allowed to talk about, hopefully you guys have a little bit more understanding on what the heck's going on. But the key takeaway I want you guys to have here is that the development team for NGS is slow. Content releases are going to be slow, slow, slow. If you are complaining about the drip content and you can't stand it and you're dying and you're tearing your hair out and you're getting mad all the time, it might be time to look at a different game. It might be time to look at Diablo 4, Street Fighter 6, Final Fantasy 16, Black Desert Online is getting that huge update on the 16th, I think, or the 14th. You know, there, there are many other games to distract you right now. So, I highly recommend to play those games. Honkai Star Rail, we're finally getting Silver Wolf. I've got all of my gacha currency saved up as well. Um, but yeah, honestly, content for this game is gonna be really, really slow. And the way that the game is designed from the developers themselves, they said that it's gonna be a super easy game to catch up on. So no FOMO, guys, please, no FOMO in this game. If you come back six months later, you're going to be able to catch up to the end game in a month of grinding. At the most, a month of grinding, you're going to be caught up with all of the whales, all of the end game people. Maybe you might not have like the most min max, like the XD capsules and all of those crazy min maxi type of stuff, but you're definitely going to be good enough, geared enough to do all of the end game content. So, if you're the type of person that is really frustrated at the game, really pissed off at Sega, and just being like, I can't believe you're destroying my childhood of Fantasy Star, please take a break. Take a six month break, or come back in August. Take a two month break, come back in August, play the new content, and if it still doesn't satisfy you, which it probably won't, um, just be like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm done. Take a six month break, take a one year break, and then come back and binge through everything. I promise you, you're gonna have so much more fun that way when you come back after a six month break, you've got all the different regions to explore, you've got more content to do, you've got stuff to gear up, and you just blast through all of that. You're gonna have so much more fun than sitting here right now Every time a little piece of new content comes and you gobble it up and you're standing there still starving for more, it's not a very healthy lifestyle to be real with you guys, man. Just take it easy. Chill. Oosa. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. Anyway, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.